Dixit is a beautifully designed party game that will inspire players' imaginations with unique large format cards. It's quick, it's easy to learn, it's fun to play, and it's a work of art as well as a board game. In Dixit, players challenge each other with creative descriptions of hidden cards and then bluff and vote on which card matches which description in order to gain points. The game supports from three to six players and plays out in anywhere from half an hour to about an hour. There are two expansions available, Dixit 2, which adds 84 new cards to the mix, and the third one, Dixit Odyssey, which is a standalone expansion that adds a full new set of cards, an improved voting system, as well as the capacity for all the way up to 12 players. Each player starts Dixit with a hand of six cards, as well as a stack of voting tokens and a rabbit scoring counter. The first player to make it to 30 points wins the game. The game can also end if you run out of cards, and in that case, it's the player with the highest score who wins. So each round has one player take on the role of the storyteller. The storyteller chooses one card from their hand and provides a descriptive clue as to its identity. This can be a sentence, a phrase, a word, or even a sound or a song. Really, the only limit there is creativity, and the same card can conjure up a surprising range of interpretations. Once the storyteller has given their description, then the other players will choose one card from each of their hands that they feel matches it the best. And they're going to take that and put it face down on the table. Once everyone has played their card, the storyteller adds his or her card to the mix and then picks them all up, shuffles them up, and then lays them face up on the table. Now each player around the table is going to vote on which card he or she thinks was the storyteller's original card. The voting is done in secret, with each player playing a voting token dependent on where the card is on the table. Cards are usually numbered from left to right. The storyteller doesn't get a vote, and nobody can vote for their own card. Once the votes have been made, the storyteller turns the voting tokens face up and reveals which cards got votes. If everybody guessed the storyteller's card correctly, or if nobody got it right, then everyone but the storyteller gets two points. If, however, not everybody guessed correctly, then the storyteller gets three points, as does anybody who correctly guessed their card. In this case, incorrect votes also count, with every player who is not the storyteller getting one point for every vote that their own card got. Because the scoring opportunities are greater in a case where not everybody votes for the same card on the table, the trick to being a good storyteller is to be just ambiguous enough to have some players vote for your card and some players not vote for your card. Other players will have the strategy of choosing their cards strategically so that they can trick other players at the table into voting for theirs, which gets them more points as well. Once the votes have been tallied and the points have been counted up, the storyteller moves to the next player and everybody draws their hand back up to six cards. So for me, the main draw of Dixit really is the art. I can't overstate how pretty this game is and the fact that the cards have such a large format means there's a huge amount of detail that really gets into the images and gives them a lot of depth and real beauty. It also means that there's no text to read, so anybody who has maybe difficulties with reading comprehension or there's a language barrier isn't going to have any problem playing this game. And it can get really interesting in multilingual settings. Uh, for example, I once played a game where there were clues actually being given in three different languages, which is not something that happens all that often in my gaming circle. One downside is that if you keep playing with the same gaming group over and over, then the dynamic of the game is slowly going to shift as memory becomes more of a factor because people remember which cards are actually in the deck. So another potential con of this game is the role of the storyteller does put the player somewhat on the spot. So if you have a few shy players who maybe aren't quite as open about their creativity, then it might make them a little bit uncomfortable, might put them off a little bit, so that could be a negative. Another positive, however, is that this game is so simple, it only has one page of rules, so that allows you to get the setup out quickly and to really focus on the gameplay and the interaction between the characters rather than worrying about complex rules and a complex setup. 